Okay, so let's, we've got our binary number converter all set up. Now we're going to do the last thing, which is the event, and actually get this working. Okay, so I'm going to still be inside the constructor. So if I go over here, this bracket ends the class. This bracket ends main. That means this bracket right here is the one I'm looking for. This ends the constructor. And before the constructor is where I want to put my event. Event for a button. And you might have multiple events if you have multiple buttons. In this case, we just have one button, so we're going to have one event. The button happened to be called button to decimal. So I'm going to say button BCN to decimal. Wow, you can't see that with my cursor in the way, can you? Dot add action listener. Okay, I'm going to put um, an open parentheses, a close parentheses, and a semicolon in. Okay, this is not it, but this is kind of what we want the, our syntax to be, just so you can see where the syntax is going. However, with inside of these parentheses right here, I want to put my action performed event. I want to put the actual event. This is just a listener that listens for something to happen. Now I need something to react when that something happens. Because this is longer, I'm going to split this code up. I'm going to take this closing parentheses and semicolon, and I'm going to put it and line it up right with my button because now I'm going to put in my new event. It's going to be a new action listener. So I'm going to say a new action listener. Open close parentheses. Now this is a method so it's going to have an open squiggly bracket. I'm going to come down here just tab over a little bit and put a closing squiggly bracket. So this one ends the action listener. Uh, this one ends the whole thing. So end event. All right. Now, within this new action listener, uh, we have to have the actual event. And it has to be called this exact same thing. If you misspell this, it's going to yell at you and say, hey, there's no action performed event. So I'm going to say public void action performed open parentheses, move that cursor out of the way so you can see, action event space E. This is the actual event right here. So I'm going to come down just a little bit, put my closing squiggly bracket. This ends the action performed. Okay, so now any code that you put in here will react to when they put press a button. So all of this right here is responsible for doing that. Okay, well what do we want to happen? Let's just show you a couple of commands. If I wanted to display something into a label, I could say um, lbl decimal dot set text hello. Okay, let's just run this, show you what happens. So I'm going to run this program. Here it is. Here's my little converter. If I just press this button, it should say hello. Set text allows you to set the text of your label at runtime. Okay, we don't want to print that there. We want to print our binary number, but I wanted to show you that. I'm going to do a couple other things just to show you, and then we're going to do our binary number. Okay, suppose I wanted to display whatever they typed in the label there. I could say string str equals, I want to get the text from my txt binary. So txt binary dot get text. That's just a getter. We've done getters before. Now here I want to display that in my label, str. There it is. So now whatever I display in the, whatever I type into the text box will display in the label. Hi there. There it is. Hi there. Um, what's something unique? U-N-I-Q-U-E. There's something unique. Unique. Whatever I type here gets displayed here because that's what I coded. I get the text and I display the text. Okay, in our case, 
we want to get the binary number. So I'm still going to keep this, but I'm going to do my little converter. Here's my converter down here. I'm going to grab this code, control X that. You were wondering when I was going to go get rid of that, huh? Now I found it. And I'm going to paste that. So I want to get the text and then display the binary. I'm going to kind of just paste this in between there. <coughs> Tab it over so it's nice and pretty. Okay, so I've declared a binary number. Then I want to set the binary number to the text that the user gave me. So right here, we're going to say str. There it is. Now instead of printing it out, I'm going to get rid of this print statement. And I'm just going to say my b dot to string. In labels, it doesn't by default call the toString method. I have to implicitly call it. So I do have to say b.toString. So this should now work. I'm going to run this. There is my binary number converter. Whatever number I type in, 11001, it will convert to decimal. That is 25. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, that is 25. All right. Okay. Now this is working. You submit it like this. I do want to show you one last thing. What if you're not getting text? What if you're entering a number into the text box? So here, if I wanted to get a number from the text box, int num equals, I still use this txt binary dot get text. But the only problem is I have to take this and convert it to a number. We've already done this before. We know we can use the integer dot parse int. It's been a long time, so we've got to review it. Parse int, and that will convert uh, text to a number. Well, our get text is text. So if we do this, we can convert this to a number. So I'm just going to comment this and this and this out and this one, and we'll show you how that works. So now if I go um, LBL decimal dot set text, I could say num plus five. I don't know. We're just going to show the number plus five. So here we go. Run it. This should now work other than the fact that it's not typecast to a string. Okay. Set text is the same thing. It can only display text. So you can either do your uh, integer dot to string, or you can actually just concatenate it by say that that number plus five is, and then it will show what our number. Actually, no, that's not going to. If we wanted to, that would show that would concatenate the two. But now it will add. There we go all this to show you this one command. Darn it. So here, now if I add a number in, uh, I'm going to put 3. 3 plus 5, it should show me 8. That number plus 5 is 8. And any number will work. 6, 6 plus 5 is 11. Um, okay, so before you submit that, make sure you comment those two lines of code out. That is just your example on how to get a number from a text box because you might be doing that in the next assignment. Okay, good luck and we will see you in class.